Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to take a look in the Soul Forge and tell you what I think are the best weapons and indeed the best troops to craft from there. We're also going to take a look at this new weekly event troop, the Main Courser. Main Course. Uh, right, let's have a look. Ultra Rare Beast explodes one gem, boosted by Leonis Empire Allies, a one to one ratio. Is that it? What? I hope the traits are awesome. Allied Rapture Gain to Life. Immunity to Entangle and Reduce Damage from Skulls by 25%. Um, I know it's only in Ultra Rare and only uses 10 mana, but my word, that is bad. Crikey. Um, yeah, unless you're a really, really newer player to the game and don't have many troops, then this is pretty much unusable for most players. Oh uh, dear. I don't think I've ever given a 1 before, out of 10. I'm not even sure if I've given a 2 out of 10 before. But that's what main course is going to get. It's going to get a 2 out of 10. It is, that's really bad. Wow. That's poor. Anyway, get it anyway. Just, you know, just pick one if you just want it for you to add to your troops. I want to get it enough to get it to mythic level because I've got enough glory. But yeah, just for the sake of doing it really, for having another troop on mythic level because it is very very poor anyway someone robbed a local bakery last night but the thief left too many clues and the police caught them bread handed <laughs> that one was given to me by kf6 dbs so thank you for that one i did need a new joke so that was useful see what I did there did need a new joke Right, Spoils of War. Always grab a 10 of them if you have the excess glory. Always good to have some more event keys, some bit more gold, and the lovely treasure maps because we know how much we adore doing treasure hunt. Right, let's jump into the Soul Forge, see what's going on in there today. We'll start with the weapons first, have a little look see at them. First up is Lion's Reach. Decent weapon, but don't craft it from here. It is in the Raid boss shop at the same time, so get it from there, because you kind of get it for free, because you're going to go to that tier anyway. I think it's tier 3 to help out your guild, and you're going to get it there anyway, so no point spending the um, gems in the Soul Forge. Explodes Magic Plus 1 Blue Gems, grants a random status effect to all Leonis Empire allies, then summons a Leonis Empire troop. So a nice explodey summony weapon, I do like them, and that's a, another one to add to our collection. Very nice indeed. Not going to go over all these other troops that are here all the time. They are in my Soul Forge extra video. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Next up, we have Golden Sun. Eliminate all armor from an enemy, which is pretty useful in a lot of situations. Gain magic plus one gold, boosted by armor eliminated. So some nice quick gold and some nice quick armor elimination. But no, no more damage after that. If you know what I mean, once the you're into the enemy's life, it's not going to actually do any more effective damage. But yeah, it's probably got a use somewhere. Orpheus' Verse. Deal magic-based damage to an enemy boosted by human allies. Then create a mix of six blue and yellow gems for each human ally. So uses red and purple, creates blue and yellow. So make sure you have some humans in your team that use blue and yellow to benefit from all that. Otherwise, you're doing it for nothing. And you don't want to do things for nothing. Pendant of the Empire. Kind of the anti-Leonis Empire weapon in a way. Removes all blue gems, which is the colour they generally like the most. Then deal magic-based damage to an enemy, boosted by gems removed. If the enemy is from Leonis Empire, or if the battle is in Leonis Empire, deal double damage. So yeah, good for them sort of situations that do come along now and again. Not essential, but I, I do always recommend picking up these lower value weapons. They may seem a bit crap, to be honest, but... It's only 75, it's, that's all it costs so to get it, 75 diamonds, and it gives you another weapon from that area, from that kingdom as well, which is going to help your kingdom progression. And when you're like just one upgraded weapon away from upgrading a kingdom, you all kind of wish you'd picked up this kind of crappy weapon, because that is one of their best uses in a way, just having enough weapons to upgrade a kingdom. Christ hook. Deal magic-based damage to an enemy boosted by Leonis Empire allies, another one of these ones. Then create a mix of six yellow and brown gems for each Leonis Empire ally. This uses green and purple, creates yellow and brown. So same deal as before, but make sure your Leonis Empire allies, at least a couple of them, use yellow 
and brown or one or the other to benefit from the mana. Fleur de Leon deals magic based heavy splash damage to an enemy and if the enemy is stunned explode four gems. The cool thing about this weapon is it's got stunned as part of its upgrades which means that when you cast it the enemy will be stunned so basically you will get to then uh, do that explosion afterwards gaining a bit more mana at the same time so pretty handy little weapon there in certain ways and any more for any more king's dagger another explodey summony weapon do like these explodes magic plus one blue gems grants a random status effect to all rogue allies then summons a rogue so another okay weapon there next up we have the doomed promise gives two magic to all allies plus one per tempering level so low at first but if you have this fully tempered up then that's a lot of magic to your whole team then gives magic plus two armor to yellow allies and if the enemy has a doom gain 10 attack so a lot of things there have to be in place to get the full benefit from that but it's actually not too bad it's like um it's pretty specialist but um in certain teams it can be actually uh, pretty decent but again far from essential and that is it because they are to do with the other ones and the uh, wonder stars is a fantastic weapon but um that's not in my soul forge extra video because that came along one stars came after that video was produced but if you've got enough resources to craft the wonder stars then that should be your first port of call it's just a fantastic weapon got a cleanse with the bless at the same time really really good and a curse as well as awesome managing most of the time can let you down now and again but not very often so if you've got enough resources definitely craft the wonder stars Right, let's uh, take a look at the troops. If you're missing any troops still, if you're new or mid-range player, then check out these summoning stones. Have a good look through there. See if there's anybody you're missing or you need more copies of and maybe roll the dice and see what you pick up. There's some okay troops here. Apothecary is very good. Transform a selected mana color to brown and cleanse all allies is very good indeed. Craghound, not bad. Yeah, some okay ones here. Cinder Hand Goblin, pretty decent. Converting five green gems to burning gems, effectively green to red. Gains an extra turn. Not too shabby. Clockwork Sphinx, handy in certain places. Yeah, some okay troops here. Angry Mob, decent mana generator. Gets more powerful and more better at generating mana as you grow with the game. So yeah, not bad at all. Right, let's uh, go to the bottom and take a look at the Mythics first. Same deal as before, all the troops are here all the time. I'm not going to go over them. They're in my Soul Forge extra video as well. But first up, we have Capricor. Knock an enemy to the back and stun them. Then move myself to the front and gain magic based attack, life, and armor. Traits are not bad. Deal double skull damage versus stunned enemies. Reduce damage from skulls by 40%. And give four life to all red allies when matching red gems. So the damage reduction from Skulls is decent. It's a bit of a shame about the way that trait works because it knocks an enemy to the back and then stuns them. So that's a bit of a shame that you can't actually then get that double Skull damage versus stunned enemies because you've knocked them to the back. It'd be nice if you knocked the back enemy to the front and stunned them. Then that would work really well. But hey, you can't have everything. So it can work well in certain teams. The only thing I don't like about it is it's kind of... You have to do this first, specifically first, to get him set up, if you know what I mean, to gain the extra attack, life and armor, and then work the rest of the team around it. So, good, but bad at the same time. The Turquoise Emperor, but that can be good. That can be very good in the right, uh, right team, just because of that extra attack. So, yeah, not too bad. And, I'll keep on going back to it, <laughs> and knock an enemy to the back is not to be underrated either. Quite often, the enemy at the front is key to the way a team works, and knocking them to the back can seriously mess up the way the way that that team works. So yeah, bit technical that troop, but it can be good in certain situations. The Turquoise Emperor deals magic-based damage to all enemies, boosted by blessed allies. Then give three to ten mana to all other allies, so not including himself. The traits are good. Last one in particular. All allies gain two random skill points. Immune to Mana Drain, Silence, Fairy Fire and Mana Burn. And Lotus Blessing, 50% chance to bless all allies when matching four or more gems. That's actually pretty cool. Bless is like a super cleanse. 
Blessed troops are cleansed and are impervious, so you don't get affected by like devour, mana burn, mana drain. As it says there, it's like really, really good. So being made impervious is powerful on its own. This is where troops like this, for me, are sometimes I think are often underrated. A lot of other players just look at the damage. I mean, it is uh, boosted by the blessed allies, and you've got a 50% chance to bless all your team when you get a four match. That can boost that damage up significantly, as well as give a bunch of mana to all the other allies, as well as the chance to make everybody impervious. is 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 decent. I like him. I like him a lot. A bit, a bit specialist as well. Astral Mother. Yeah. Oh dear. Never mind. Remove all the gems of a chosen colour with another effect. This is a bit bizarre for a mythic. If, if it was with full effect, it might have made it usable. But then deals magic-based true scatter damage boosted by gems removed at a times five ratio. That's just, it's just a bit poor. It really is. It's a bit of a shame. The traits are okay. Impervious is good. And 40% chance to give reflect to a random ally when my turn begins. But yeah. They're just way, way better mythics out there and a lot of better legendaries at the same time. So Astral Mother, pitiful effort. And Ishtara does magic-based damage to all enemies, creates nine yellow gems boosted by blessed allies. The Divine Roar is handy for this. 50% chance to bless a random ally when my turn begins. And I suppose that would actually pair quite well with Turquoise Emperor. And reduced damage from the skulls by 40% is decent as well. So the fact that it uses yellow, it does that damage to all and creates nine yellow, which means it can create a lot of yellow back and basically self-charge and, and do it again. Makes it a fairly decent troop. Not top tier, but it's decent. It's kind of in the middle of the mythics for me. So was that four? One, two, three, four. Yes. Right, so let's have a quick look at the legendaries before we decide who is the mythic of the month who is the most craftable who is the most essential out of the four mythics here but let's take a look at these legendaries first Ulf Harrigan really good troop I like this does magic plus three true damage to three random enemies and if an enemy is wounded deal 10 extra damage then summon Ulf's mascot so a lot of true damage you can get extra damage as well and a summon so decent I like him I like him a lot. You mean compare that to Astral Mother? I mean, just as a comparison straight away. 47 scatter damage boosted by gems removed. I know the times 5 ratio could push that up because of the gems removed, but but still, this is like guaranteed damage where you don't have to set things up specifically for, you know, picking away certain gems to make the damage good. That's a decent amount of damage just straight away. And a summon. Not bad. Who's next? Killing. Very good indeed. Converting purple to red and brown to skulls and bless to random allies. Summon a light storm at the start of battle is useful in yellow based teams. So you see this a lot on Guild Wars. When Guild Wars finally returns because it's been confirmed it ain't happening yet. It's been re rebuilt from the ground up basically as we said a few weeks ago. And it'll be ready when it's ready so no rush. I'd rather Guild Wars was just delayed and came back when it's ready rather than rushed full of bugs. So that'd be no good. Sekma. I used to love using this troop in the early days. Really, really cool. Transforms blue gems to skulls and brown to yellow. Then deal magic plus one damage to an enemy boosted by all other allies and magic. If you boost up all other allies and magic, that boost can be really, really good. And Sekma can dish out a lot of damage. And com combined with that transforming blue to skulls and, and brown to yellow, is a very decent troop indeed and gains two magic on red gem matches is nice as well. So Sekma, really cool. Garuda summons a firestorm. That deals magic plus four damage to all enemies. Gains one magic boosted by red gems. Uh, Allied Strix gain five life and attack. But yeah, it's nothing too great anymore. It's much better uh, damage for all troops now than Garuda. Don't see it that often. But who gets my... A mythic of the week well I can tell you one thing it's not going to be astral mother so it's going to be between the other ones Ishtara turquoise emperor and a Capricorn Capricorn is all right it's just a bit specialist and you got to work it into a team in a particular way to make it work but when you do that it, it could be really really effective because of those uh, boosts in, in attack in particular so it's basically between the Turquoise Emperor and 
Ishtara for me. Ishtara, like I said, is a very middling mythic. Damage to all. Got a chance to create loads of yellow and potentially do it again. And he has a 50% chance to bless a single ally though when its turn begins. Where uh, the turquoise emperor does damage to all boosted by blessed allies. And there's a 50% chance to bless all allies when matching four more gems. And gives mana as well. And has sky ancestry. So I'm just going to edge it to the turquoise emperor. Because I really like that lotus blessing the fact you got that cleanse effectively on all troops is really really nice for the 50 percent chance on a four match and the damage is boosted by that as well as well as give mana so yeah i'm just about going to edge it to the turquoise emperor some people would prefer ishtara some people in particular teams would say Capricor. it's one of those days where there's quite a few uh Mythics around the same kind of level, shall we say. But I'm going to give it to the Turquoise Emperor. Anyway, I'll be back later on with my Raid Boss team and the Underspire team. But that is it for the Soul Forge video. If you enjoyed it, found anything useful or helpful, be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button. It really does help. But most of all, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.